According to their website, the Calgary Separate School District, or CSSD, serves Catholic students living in the city of Calgary, Airdrie, Cochrane, Chestermere, and related municipal district lands of Rocky View. In the 2009-2010 school year, the district boasted over 45,000 students in 103 school locations. The CSSD offers several professional development initiatives to train its staff, including the Technology Leadership Program, or TLP. I was fortunate to be selected as a member of the Phase 2 of the TLP. The TLP is a two-year program designed to expose teachers and administrators to innovative classroom technologies. The Phase 2 was a different group of members from Phase 1, and the topic matter was also different. The Phase 2 is currently in the second year of its program. Most meetings were conducted at the St. Paul Center, a former school that has been converted to office and meeting space for district consultants and for professional development such as the TLP. Meetings in Phase 2 included information sessions on Microsoft OneNote, district technology initiatives such as a technology snapshot and school-based technology evergreening, the National Education Technology Standards for Teachers from the International Society for Technology and Education, an introduction to the use of smart Sentio keypads, smart boards, technology integration issues, the Alberta Innovative Classrooms Technology Funding, and Desire to Learn, the distributed learning software otherwise known as D2L. The TLP made occasional use of the D2L page for discussions, guiding questions, and to share documents of interest to the members of the program. Occasionally, members of the TLP met at school locations to tour technology programs in action. These included a trip to Our Lady of Assumption Elementary Junior High School in Bonas, and Corpus Christi, an elementary school in Northwest Calgary. Possibly the biggest draw to being in the TLP was that every member received a Toshiba tablet computer to use for district business. The tablet was meant to follow the teacher from school to school so they could keep it even past the conclusion of Phase 2. Participants were also occasionally given readings to complete at home in order to facilitate discussion at TLP meetings. It was clear after the first day of Phase 2 that every member was at a different level of comfort with technology. The ability levels ranged from near beginner to expert, causing the instructors to often teach to the lowest common denominator. Sometimes it seemed to the participants as though the instructors had a lack of direction for the program. Topics were brought up that did not tie in together, technologies were introduced or used but with little information on their pedagogical use. The D2L component was underused due to a lack of direction from the leaders or from an unwillingness on the part of the participants to visit the site or from infrequent reminders or references to the site. Occasionally, a presenter from a company such as Smart would be asked to present. To some members of the TLP, it seemed as though these were more salespeople than educators who actually used the technology successfully in the classroom. Participants came from all areas of teaching and administration, which often led to topics being addressed outside of somebody's teaching assignment. Meetings took place during class time, which often caused problems for teachers that have to make changes to teaching schedules. On the other hand, the alternative, which is to hold meetings in the evening, is not necessarily a better choice, because it would impact the member's family and personal lives. Some possible adjustments to the technology leadership program might be to divide the large group into focus groups to help people learn what is applicable to their current assignment. It might have been effective to split the larger phase into smaller sub-phases for individual levels of expertise, beginner, intermediate, or expert. On one occasion this was done with a variety of topics and it was effective at meeting the participants' needs. Better use of the D2L site would have benefited the teachers in the TLP. Instructors should refer to the site more frequently and give members more reasons to visit. Most participants found the school visits to be extremely beneficial. Future TLP phases should make regular use of this so that the technology leaders have the opportunity to share and observe with each other's ideas. 
It might even be profitable to meet at locations outside of the district to see what innovations are occurring elsewhere. There are many good points about the CSSD's technology leadership program. Participants were exposed to a variety of different innovative technologies and were given frequent opportunities to network. With a few adjustments, the program could be even more valuable to educators in the Calgary Separate School District.